What's up, Eric? I read your post, so it's your brother in Christ. I just wanted to give you this word um, to encourage you. Um, like you said, everybody else encourage you as well, too. Uh, Mark 4 and 14, it says, The farmer plants seed by taking God's word to others. Verse 15, The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message, only to have Satan come out at once and take it away. Verse 16, The seed on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. Verse 17, but since they do not have deep roots, they do not last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. Verse 18, the seed that fell among the thorns represents others who hear God's word. Verse 19, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the worries of this life and the lure of wealth, the desire for other things, so no fruit is produced. Verse 20, and the seed that fell on good soil represents those who hear and accept the word and produce a harvest of 30 60 or even 100 times as much as had they had planted verse 21 then jesus asked them would anyone light a lamp and then put it under a basket or under a bed of course not a lamp is placed on the stand where its lights will shine so what god is saying is that he wants you to teach people how to have deep roots in him you know what i'm saying a lot of times you know you're talking about academia you know a lot of people that go after uh you know fame and whatever the case may be and you know we're getting like you know degrees and everything like that a lot of people miss him on the way up there or they get to the point where they're like no nah, i'm good god or anything like that but that's why god is make, bringing you having you a light and where you at because like you were saying you know um it was like fire shut up in your bones it's because you know saying god is using you as an example to be a light there, you know what I'm saying? And what we go through, a lot of time people say, you know, why do good things happen to bad people? Or, you know, why do bad things happen to good people? You know what I'm saying? It's just understanding. And sometimes it could be our perspective, which causes us to be frustrated or anything like that. But, you know, this is a season where God wants you to focus on him. Now, there's going to be some distractions, you know what I'm saying? The enemy will use anybody he can to distract you. But when you focus on him, you know, God is going to show you some things. God is going to strengthen you, you know what I'm saying? And that's why I'm playing this song, you know, saying the great I am, you know. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians 1 and 3, all praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The God is merciful, Father, and the source of all our comfort. Why? Verse 4, he comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others when they are troubled. We will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. So that's why you are where you're at, so you can help others. You know what I'm saying? So you can help others get through. You know what I'm saying? That's why the scripture says, Yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I sure feel no evil. You know what I'm saying? And you're showing people how to walk through that valley because, you know, you're going to be able to help other people, you know what I'm saying, get through. Verse 4, great is my confidence in you, great is my pride in you. I am filled with encouragement in all our troubles. My joy overflows. So one thing I notice is that, you know, when I look back at my trials and my tribulations, I, I get great comfort and joy in Jesus because I can help somebody get through, you know what I'm saying? Because I've been down that road or I've been down that path, you know what I'm saying, to help somebody. And I see that, I mean, you just never know who's watching you. You know, they might not always comment. They might not always post or anything like that, but you just never know. I remember there was times I would say things on Facebook and, you know, um, you know, sometimes I, you know, you see and pay attention, like if somebody liked it or comment or whatever, you just see their name, but there'd be people that, you know, I would say, you know, Hey, happy birthday. You know what I'm saying? They'd be like, yo, continue to bless, you know, continue to keep saying what you're saying and God. And I'm just like, okay, God. Um, you know, to God be the glory. So obviously they pay attention, you know, and I had some people just say, oh man, I thank you for being a big brother. And I'm just like, you know, you just never know, like people really, you know, saying, watching, you know, they pay attention. So that's why, you know, God has you being bold in your post that you're making for people, you know what I'm saying, on Facebook to stand up because, you know, God is raising up a generation that is going to glorify him and stand on the word of God and not on, you know, saying man's religion. You know, First Peter 4 and 11, if anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should also do with the strength God provides so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Verse 12, dear friends or dear Erica, do not be surprised at the fiery trial or the fiery ordeal that has come to test you 
as if something strange were happening to you. See, a lot of times God allows us to go through things so that we can help others get through, you know what I'm saying? But it's not, you know, I was telling somebody, you know, the storm was not meant to break you. It was meant to make you. And sometimes God wants to bring peace while we're in that storm. Yeah, God can take the storm away, but he wants to give people peace in that situation. You know, I was telling the person, they was just like, you know, I just wish God will remove this situation. I'm like, God wants to bring you peace now into the situation so that you can help others because there are going to be some people that are in some storms and that storm is not going to go away. You know, that's why Jesus rested when he was on the boat and he told him like, y'all could have rebuked the waves because think about it. They were like, you know, they were waking Jesus up. Like, look, Jesus, when they was on the boat, it's like, look, man, we about to drown. Like, you really think Jesus would have really let everybody drown in that boat while he's there sleeping? But that's what he wants you to do. He wants you to teach his people how to rest. You know what I'm saying? Matthew, Matthew was at 8, I think 28 through 30. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it talks about, you know what I'm saying, resting in the Lord. But First Peter four and 13, but rejoicing as much as you participate in the sufferings of Jesus Christ so that you may be overjoyed with his glory is revealed. You know what I'm saying? So Genesis 15 and 20, what the enemy meant for evil, God will turn for good. You know, Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose, for those that love him, all things work together, not some. So God is giving you a promise that if you love him, no matter what it is, you know, it will all work out to your good. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Believe not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. See, sometimes, you know, we try to lean on our own understanding, which can cause us frustration. But that's when God wants us to continue focusing on him and just wait till God revealed his plans. John 16 and 33. These are going to be some key verses. This one. Um, 1633 and this next one 1427 that you're going to help people actually have peace in a difficult situation or a storm I have so John 1633 it says I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace in this world you will have trouble but take heart I have overcome the world John 1427 peace I leave with you my peace I give to you I do not give to you as the world gives you do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. So there are going to be some times, you know, when you got to study, you know what I'm saying? You got to discipline yourself, you know what I'm saying? And it just feel like it's, it's it's not worth it. You know what I'm saying? You want to give up, you know what I'm saying? But God is saying your peace is in me, you know what I'm saying? Not in the world, not as the world, not as the world gives it to you. Acts 14 and 22, strengthen your souls of the disciples. So it says, Acts 14, 22, strengthening the souls of the disciples and encouraging them to continue in the faith. We must endure many hardships to enter the kingdom of God, they said. Romans 8, 37, you are more than a conqueror. And what does conqueror mean? If you look at the dictionary, it means to gain or acquire by force of arms. Whose arms? Jesus Christ. To gain a mastery over or win by overcoming obstacles. To overcome by mental or more power or to be victorious and you are victorious second corinthians 6 and 4 rather as servants of god we commend ourselves in every way and in, in great endurance in troubles and hardships and calamity so that's why god is saying great endurance first samuel 30 and 6 you know it's talking about how david was greatly stressed but he encouraged himself in the lord and sometimes we have to encourage ourselves in the lord but when you said what you said you know, you were, you know, your soul was crying out and that's why everybody reached out to you because it's like, you know, that's why it says iron sharpens iron and you have that love because people want to um, help you. Ecclesiastes 9 and 11, the race is not given to the swift or the battle is not given to the strong, but those who endure to the end. So first Timothy four and eight, physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. Why? Because we still got life to live. That's why that's why giving up is not an option. But, you know, as if we train and, you know, we're getting exercise and everything like that, that's of some value. But imagine, you know, you got to teach us, you know, teach God's people how to train godly, you know. And second Corinthians three and 16, all scripture is God breathed or inspired by God and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness. You know, and prophets come to bring correction direction and instruction if i leave you with this verse 17 second corinthians 3 and 17 this is a message bible through the word we are put together and shaped up for the task god has for us matthew 6 33 seek ye first and all things shall be added unto you you know 
So God definitely has great plans for you. You know what I'm saying? Plans to lead his people. That's why he's raising you up. That's why it's inside of you. And one of my favorite scriptures um, that helps me, Isaiah 26 and 3, it says, God will keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. And that has helped me. You know, God told me, if you take care of my business, I'll take care of yours. Um, so I just came to encourage you. Um, just thank God. It's just an honor, you know, when God used me. So, all right, sis. Love you. God bless.